Now that we have this dynamic URL routing working, we can start to make links to those individual posts from that list that we created already. So if we actually jump into that list, the object list for, the, of course, the post list itself, we're going to come in here and we're going to just add a link to the title. So of course, a link is a href equals to something and just closing it out where you wrap around the thing that you want to actually link. So um, the href itself, what I'm going to do is first off, just say slash posts slash object obj.id and then slash. So this is the hard coding version of it, right? So we know it goes to posts and it's object ID. So if I refresh in the list here and run the server, of course, refresh in the list. Now I have all these links. If I actually click on the links, they will take me to where I want them to go, right? So this is cool because it does directly to that. Um, there's a better way to do this, and this is by using named URLs. So this is making our URLs that much more powerful. So if we jump back into URLs, I'm just gonna add a name parameter in here, and I'll say name equals to post underscore detail. Now this name is could, could be a whole variety of things, so I'm gonna leave it actually as just detail for now. Um, we will update how these names work in just a moment, but name is detail. So let's go back into our index, and instead of having it like this, I'm gonna say URL, and it's gonna be detail, and then I'm gonna add in the ID equals to object.id, and we'll save that. We'll go back and refresh, and it's still working. This is cool. But one of the biggest advantages of using something like this is when we go into our URLs and we say, let's call this, um, let's put detail back in here and we save it. We refresh in here and I click and now it will take me to that detail link. So that's rather important and it's all very, very dynamic. So that's why in our, like using this is a much better method than hard coding it, which was, you know, slash post slash ID. Um, but there's even one more method that's even better. And that is using something called git absolute URL. And it's going to associate this same sort of URL to the, the actual model itself or the model instance itself. So this is a convenience method that will actually be in there. So let's go ahead and open up models.py and we're going to just do define git absolute URL going to take in self and it's going to return let's just do posts slash and then do some string substitution in here with self.id save that get absolute url so get absolute url so now that we've got this we're going to go back into our index here i'm going to cut this one out and put it right above here and then we're going to just do object.get absolute URL, save that, and let's go, we looks like we've got a little bit of an error here, so back into our models, we don't have the right indentation, and this has to do with how our sublime text has been working, notice this is a tab, these are spaces, so I'm just going to tab them back, and just update these to being all spaces, so now if I look in here, the little dots indicate spaces, so I'm going to save that, and that index and indentation level thing should be gone. I refresh in here and if I click on it and it is now still taking me to that post. But if we look back at this get absolute URL, it's not a whole lot different than what we did originally where we hard coded it. So what we need to do is something very similar to this. And we do this by using something called reverse. So we'll do from Django.core, excuse me, dot core dot URL resolvers import reverse and all we're going to do here now is we're going to return reverse of that url name which we call detail and then we are going to give the keyword arguments equals to um, a dictionary itself id is equal to self.id comment this out save that and we refresh in here and click on any individual list item and it's still working cool so now i'm going to go ahead and delete this 
Reverse is really nice. So reverse is saying keyword args equals to ID, blah, blah, blah. So if I jumped into the URL itself and changed this to being ABC, a few things we'd have to change. First of all, we'd have to go into our view and change these to ABC, which we did. And then we'll also have to go into our model, our reverse call, and we'll have to change this to ABC as well, or at least the name of the keyword argument. Of course, what's coming through is the instance ID, just like we did with Unicode and string. Um, we have the self.id. And if I refresh in here again, I've got this problem, uh, keyword arguments ID, and this is now coming from the template itself. So if I go back into the template, we still have this ID equals to um, object.id. If I change that to ABC and refresh, now it's working all over again. Um, of course, that's not what we wanna do, but I just wanna show you how it would be done. So let's undo all of those changes in our views and also in our URLs. But there's one more thing that I wanna to do to make this just even more dynamic, and that is in our main URL. So if I open that up, I wanna add a namespace in here. Say, so call this namespace equals to, and I'm gonna call this posts. So now that I've added this namespace in here, if I refresh and now gives me this no reverse match error, um, for detail and it's gonna do it for every single one. So once I add this namespace in, it just adds one more level of like actually designing how our URLs works and it just makes it cleaner. So then we can keep our name detail even if we have multiple apps with the same URL name detail. Because the important part here with the, the name, the URL name itself, you can only have one of them. Right? You can't have multiple multiple URLs with the name detail. It's, it's gonna raise errors there. So to, over, to compensate for that, we add a namespace for posts. So any other app that you wanna use, you can just give it a namespace and then update how your URLs work specifically. So back in our models, we would go in, instead of reverse just detail, it'd be posts colon detail, right? So the namespace colon the URL name. And then we wanna do that everywhere else the URL type of call would exist. So in index, this is also gonna be posts detail. And now if we refresh in here, it works again. Now again, so going back, let's let's kind of refresh everything here one more time, is we added these URL names to make our URLs, the links themselves more dynamic. So instead of hard coding it every time, everywhere we go, we make them very dynamic by using URL names as well as URL namespaces. So namespaces are only applied when you use a set of URLs, right? So like in our posts, we have a set of URLs. We have several other URLs, so we can call it a namespace and, and just kind of blanket statement, the namespace is for that set of URLs. And then each individual URL can have a URL name that might conflict with another URL name with a different namespace. Right, so that's gonna take some practicing on your own on actually how to do that. But the important part here is making these URLs very dynamic and being able to be shared and also changed without breaking your entire system. That is one of the more important parts is being able to change the URLs without breaking everything and just making them a lot smarter. Finally, that get absolute URL function, this is something that is a best practice for Django when you're using models. So get absolutely URL is 100% used all the time for other models as well. If you have any questions on this stuff, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.